the cartoons. I picked three cartoons that are from a popular cartoonist here known as Gado. So the three that I picked, um, the first one is Uhuru, Ruto and Raila um, standoff. So it was really just showing the political intrigues that have been happening with the opposition and um, the presidency in terms, of course, with um, the coming up um, elections. Then the second one is um, the BBI versus COVID vaccine conversation where it seems the government is more interested in the BBI, which is the Building Bridges Initiative. It's a political vehicle um, as opposed to the COVID-19 vaccine and just in general, um, the people that are dying in the hospital from COVID-19. And then the third one is the DJ Volk shooting um, was basically um, an MP, a sitting MP, Babu Owino, who allegedly shot a DJ at a club on camera. The video is available online. So that has caused quite the stir as well when it comes to um, justice. When it comes to three political pictures, I think the first one that is seared in my brain is basically the Kiamba church uh, burning during the post-election violence. I believe 60 people were burned inside a church. So the photos of the church on fire, um, that was a, a turning point during the post-election violence. And it's still such an incredibly sad um, thing to have happened. Then the second picture is uh, Uhuru Ruto running for the presidency this um this happened uh, when they were indicted at the icc for crimes against humanity so they joined forces to run for the presidency and vice presidency um and they won so that's that's sort of one of the first pictures of them when they when they decided to run um then the third picture is uhuru and raila handshake so this is basically what led to the BBI, the Building Bridges Initiative. Um, them reconciling, realizing the opposition and um, who is the presidency. So, um, so they, you know, quote unquote, reconciled and decided to move forward together. And so that picture um, in recent times, I think, is one of the most memorable and um, we are definitely, I think those three events are definitely still uh, part of what is going on in Kenya right now, driving a lot of what is going on in Kenya right now. In terms of tweets, this was a bit tougher because I spent quite a lot of my online time on Twitter and there are a lot of gems on there. But I would say the three that are very, um, in terms of mainstream, um, effect, affecting the mainstream um, would be one the latest um, tweet from I think it's a pinned tweet on State House Kenya's uh, Twitter right now. So basically, just announcing that we were the current lockdown that we are currently in in the curfew. So that caused a lot of uh, conversations. A lot of Kenyans were very unhappy because people didn't think that the president was actually going to lock down the country. Um, especially given that the economy is doing so poorly. The next tweet is um, David D. is a famous economist and political well, commentator. He tweeted that Kenya needs a divorce. Um, so basically just a separation of people who support the government and those who do not, um, or who are getting benefits and those who aren't. Um, it caused a lot of conversation it still does cause a lot of conversation, so that's definitely a memorable tweet. And last but not least on the tweets, um, Utemi Okiyama, latest, I think, Twitter uh, tweet rather on this um, list. Yes, it is. He tweeted um, basically a tweet asking them IMF to um, not consider um, the loans that to our president Uhuru Kenyatta is taking um, to be on behalf of Kenyans. That, that should be his own um, issue, I guess. And he got arrested for that. 
um, and started a huge conversation that is still ongoing because Kenyans are still going on Facebook and Twitter um, and commenting and telling, telling the IMF to stop giving loans to Kenya. When it comes to Facebook, um, I'll say one um, person that does really well on there is Dr. Wandia Njoya. She posts a lot about education and she has really great insights on the direction in which the education is going on um, in Kenya. So her posts are very powerful and very popular. Um, I'll say then the two other posts that um, come top of mind and it's simply because of the comments and the conversation that they caused on those platforms. So I will say on Citizen TV, uh, the Linus Kaikai and our Deputy President Ruto, the interview that they, that they did um, caused a lot of conversation. So there are tons of comments and uh, the conversation was um, quite a lot. Back to the analogy of the relay race and the button, <clears throat> do you think it is over as far as President Kenyatta passing the baton to you in next year's election, considering some of the statements he has made, including when he had a meeting in Sagana, where he said that, and this was an insinuation, that he's not going to leave leadership to thieves. What did you think he meant? <laughs> Maybe you should ask him. And then the second one um, is the chaos during the lockdown, the pandemic lockdown. Recently, um, there was uh, traffic lockdowns by the police where they basically put up roadblocks, stopping anyone who was past curfew from getting home. So people were basically on the road trying to get home. Um, some people were sick, some people were taking others to hospital, etc. cetera. Um, and then there's so much traffic because of the road construction. So it was a huge news item because of um, just, I guess a lot of Kenyans were surprised or shocked. And, and of course, there was a lot of outrage about the ways in which uh, the police went about it. So in terms of videos, I would say the three videos that um, really stuck out for me are one, I think I'd mentioned it earlier, uh, another actual video is Babu Owino, the MP, uh, basically look what it looks like is that he is um shooting um a dj at a certain establishment embakasi east mp babu owino who is seen in the cctv footage firing a gun at a man who was established to be felix orinda or dj evolve has taken the news coverage as a shot at him he has now threatened to sue the nation media group in the demand letter from his lawyers or catch partners advocates the claim is that the CCTV footage aired on the news, particularly this one, where Babu can be seen shooting DJ Evolve, was maliciously used in the story. So, of course, that, that um, conversation is still ongoing because the case is still, I believe, is still in court and there's a lot of conversation about uh, justice and power and how um, criminals who, or, or people who do criminal, uh, uh, criminal acts can get away with it because of their position in society or um, the money that they have. Then the second video that comes to mind is uh, a report that uh, now has become part of Kenyan, um, I guess, meme culture, really, is um, Uhuru um, talking about two billion shillings being stolen every day in terms of corruption in Kenya. The president the other day confessed the two billion shillings are lost every day. Now, you know, Mr. President, he is not just a simple guy. When a whole president confesses that two billion shillings are lost, believe it, it's true. Mr. President, thank you for the confession that we are all thieves minus opportunities. But what does that tell you? Mr. President, you have the EACC. You have the DPP, you have the NIS, you have every government machinery at your disposal. Either the government knows who steals the Kenyan money or the government is part of the stealing. 
What are you telling Kenyans when you confess such? That you are defeated? Who will save then this country if the president cannot save us? On Monday, January 18th, 2021, President Uru Mwige Kenyatta defended the government spending on the Building Bridges Initiative, adding that over 2 billion Kenyan shillings was being misappropriated daily. Those people should not mislead the public that 15 billion Kenyan shillings will be spent. Yet, what they steal every day is more than 2 billion Kenyan shillings. These people are useless. And I will say it openly. How much do they spend every year? He stated, Assuming the government gave every citizen 500 bob worth of food, just from the 2 billion, do you know you and your household of 5 people will be fed for at least 24 days? Now that is calculating with only 20 working days. Now, some people still aspire to own land, which is good. So we are going to buy land. An eighth piece of land at 300,000. It means the government can actually buy 1.6 million people an eighth piece of land every year with that money. Then the third video is an oldie. Um, it's basically um, Raila Odinga calling for mass action during the post-election violence. Fellow Kenyans, we have in the last two days Witness tensions running high in our nation. Kenyans are deeply disturbed and angered by the attempt of this government to steal this election through a process that was fraudulent at the every step of the way. The people know that they voted to reject the incumbent and put in place a president and a government they will have faith in. That is why they have elected me as the president. So I feel like those three are videos that um, I can never forget. I think in terms of the pros and cons to these platforms, I think in terms of pros, I would say um, one is the, that you have all these new sources, basically, because then someone could be somewhere um, where something that's newsworthy is happening and because they are on ground um, they can share that news with the rest of the world and then it's easier for journalists to be able to sort of reach out to that person to verify um, or to even get um, footage and things that you probably wouldn't be able to get because maybe you're not there or um, you can't get there then um what else i would say another pro is that you have audience insights so you're able to know how many people are actually uh, interacting with the news and the content that you're producing and you can and they give you feedback so you can be able to act on that um, on those insights to make your news delivery better in terms of cons i would say that there is the pressure to be digital digitally um to be first, basically, like the whole breaking news is that um, it that ecosystem does not um, it does not encourage more research. It's really just a race to be first, which is definitely not a good thing. And then I would say is misinformation. So a lot of fake news online and trying to dig through all the information to get to the truth um, can be quite a challenge. I would like to look at it as, as more of a positive. I think that um, the speed of 5G and the lack of latency means that you can deliver news faster. And I think it's also going to be interesting to see um, the ways in which the innovation can happen through you know devices, as devices also get to uh, 5G, devices that belong to the audience now, um, and what that kind of interaction uh, is going to look like and what kind of innovations are going to come out of that um, when it comes to delivery of news. All in all, I do think that digital um, news and um, in general the internet and the technology that is available today is exciting and there are a lot of benefits to it and that there's a lot of innovation that can happen 
and so I look forward to seeing the different ways in which um, news is going to be um, gotten, delivered, packaged. It's definitely uh, very exciting. Hopefully, we'll still be able to keep people informed um, with the truth. But um, it's it's definitely very exciting.